Clustering and classification of data are two key, key component of statistical learning. In clustering what we do, we have a heterogeneous population hetero of data points and we break them or we group them in some clusters, right? small homogeneous to some extent homogeneous groups. As we have discussed earlier, suppose I have a gene expression data of from coming from two experimental condition, the clustering algorithm will try to find out which of these genes in my data set have similar or close behavior in these two experimental condition. When we see say that two data point has a close behavior or similar behavior, that means I need some sort of measurement of closeness or similarity between two data points. So, in this lecture, I will discuss different types of distance measure that are usually used in machine learning, particularly in biology. I will start with the simplest and the well known one that all of us know from school is called Euclidean distance. It's the same experimental condition suppose we have, we have two genes x and y suppose, right? And I want to measure the distance between them and I want to use Euclidean distance as a measure of distance between them. So, in experiment 1 and 2, x has x1 and x2 level of expression, whereas in experiment 1, y has y1 and experiment 2, y has y2. So, x1, x2 is the coordinate for x gene and y1, y2 is the coordinate for the y gene. You want to calculate the distance between these and you will use the simple uh, uh, the rule we learned in geometry class. What I will do? The distance, I have written E to represent Euclidean distance will be equal to square root of, ins inside the square root you will have x1 minus y1, right? So, this distance x1 minus y1's whole square plus x2 minus y2's whole square and you are doing the square root of that. This is essentially Euclidean distance and we have all learned that in school and we can use this as a measure for distance between two genes in my experiment or any other two object in my clustering problem. Now, usually as I said your experimental condition will be large, right? not just two experimental condition, you may have uh, 10, 12 experimental condition, you may have taken sample from 50 sample, uh, 50 samples like 50 tumor samples. So, you have a multi-dimensional data. So, suppose I have uh, n dimensional data, that means for x gene I can represent that data as a vector, x1, x2, xn are the measurement of that in different experiment or different samples. And for y also, I can stack this data to create a vector y1, y2 up to yn. Now, I can use the same rule that just we discussed for two dimensional problem to calculate the Euclidean distance. What I will do? In two dimensional problem, I have uh, two squares inside the squ uh, square root, right? Now, I will have n uh, summation. So, what I have to do? I have to calculate xi minus yi. Where, where i varies from 1 to n and then square that, I will sum all those values. In this case, i has varied from 1 to 2 actually. So, in this particular case where I have n dimensional data, I will vary i from 1 to n and I will get the square of this difference and sum all those n terms together and calculate the square root. That will be my Euclidean distance between two objects or two data points or in this case two genes in n dimensional data set, right? Now, actually we can use uh, linear algebra to very easily to calculate this Euclidean distance. Let me show that what we will do. So, usually what we will do, we will represent these data uh, as column vectors, right? And then the dot product between x vector minus y vector, right? So, you have uh, x vector minus y vector. So, that will be uh, something like that x1 minus y1, x2 minus y2, something like that x1, xn minus yn, right? So, this is the x minus y vector. So, the dot product between x minus y vector, right, will give you the square of the Euclidean distance. And you can actually represent the dot product in this form. You take the transpose of x minus y and multiply with x minus y. So, these are easy to do using R and you can easy or any other programming language and rather than doing the sum by iteration in a loop and then uh, adding them and then taking the square root, this method is much faster to implement. Now, 
Euclidean distance measure actually the diagonal distance, isn't it? For example, if I have uh, two data point, two genes or two objects, you are calculating the diagonal distance between them. What if I want, do not want to measure the diagonal distance, but something else that how many steps I have to move in the right and then up to reach from one data point to another one. That means, I am saying how many steps I will go in this direction and then how many steps I should go up to move from this to this. And that is where the Manhattan distance comes. So, I have the same n dimensional data for x and y, two data points or two genes or two objects and the Manhattan distance will, will be equal to the difference between x i and y i in two dimension this is x 1 minus y 1 and this is x 2 minus y 2. So, you take the absolute value of this, you take the absolute value of this difference and you sum them, no squaring nothing, just the absolute value and you sum them. That is called Manhattan distance. Now, you can easily see there is a pattern, right? In Euclidean distance, we have the square term and then we sum them together and as we have taken a square term, we are taking a square root. In Manhattan distance, my power is here 1, right? So, I do not need to take a uh, square root or something like that. So, what we gen when we try to generalize this, we get something called Minkowski distance. How do you define that? That Minkowski distance is equal to you take the absolute difference between x i and y i and raise it to the power p and sum those value, you raise to the power p and sum those value and take the pth root, right? That is why I have written 1 by p. So, you take the pth root. So, when p equal to 1, it is Manhattan distance. When p equal to 2, it is Euclidean distance. So, this is a generalization and p is should be always bigger equal to bigger equal to 1. So, this is called Minkowski distance. Now, in all this distance measure, whether you are using uh, Euclidean 1 or generalized Minkowski distance, we are not bothered about dispersion of data, but dispersion of data can have effect on this measure starting from Euclidean to Minkowski distance. Let me explain what do I mean by that. In general, if there are suppose I have experimental condition 1 and I have experimental condition uh, 2 and there is not much difference in the variance of the data in these two experimental conditions, right? And there is no correlation between or relation between or dependency between experimental condition 1 and experimental condition 2. Then what will happen? My data points will be almost equivalently dispersed throughout this space, is not it? Something like this. But if you imagine that the experimental 1 and experimental 2, ex, uh, condition 2 has some sort of correlation between them, then what may happen? My data may look like this. It has a skew. At the same time, the variance of these two experiment of data in these two experimental condition may also vary. So, that will give another type of skew. So, there is a hidden relation in this data. The data is not equivalently or uniformly distributed throughout the space. So, this bias distribution, this hidden relation between different x dimension can actually give error to your calculation for Euclidean distance or any other uh, similar distance measure. Now, to correct this error, what we have to use? We have to give some weightage for different dimension. For example, in this direction, we have more dispersion, whereas in this direction, you have less dispersion. So, you have to give differential weightage between data uh, for these dimensions. And that is where Mahalanobis distance comes. How we define Mahalanobis distance? So, this is my data. I have n dimensional data here for x and y. Now, the Mahalanobis distance is defined as the square root of x minus y transpose into inverse of s 
into x minus y. What is x minus y? x minus y is the difference between x vector and y vector. x vector is for one uh, gene, one object, y vector is for the other gene or other data point or other object. What is S? S is the covariance matrix. We take the inverse of that and we put it in the middle and the whole thing is multiplied and you take a square root of that, that is Mahalanobis distance. Look at this definition very carefully. If I consider that in these two dimension, in this direction and this direction, there is no correlation. There is no connection between these two uh, linear, uh, some sort of depend, there is no dependence between these two dimension. And in both the dimension, both the experimental condition, your variance, variance is equal to 1. So, then if you take x data and y data, then how will the s look like? The covariance will look like? Covariance will look like something like this. You will have 1 here one here because in covariance matrix your diagonal element gives the variance. So, I as I have considered the variance in both the direction is 1. So, I will have 1 here, 1 here and as I have considered there is no correlation between the, the two dimensional data then I should have covariance is 0. So, this is a identity matrix. So, if I put that here, so it will be inverse of identity matrix and that will be also identity matrix and then this whole thing becomes same to Euclidean distance. It will become x minus y transpose of that into a inverse of identity matrix into x minus y and the square root of that. You can easily do the multiplication and you will realize this is nothing but a Euclidean distance because we can simply forget about it. it is equivalent to 1. So, when data is uniformly distributed, there is no bias and there is no correlation between these two experimental conditions, then Molonovi's distance is essentially Euclidean distance. But when there is some bias, there is some value, these are not 0, I have V1 uh, something there and these are also not equal, suppose this is A and this is B, then this covariance matrix will correct my error in my Euclidean distance calculation and it will be a better measurement of the distance between two objects or two data points. Now, till now we are working on essentially Euclidean distance. There is some sort of another distance called chord distance. Let us explain what is that. In case of Euclidean distance, if I have these two data point, I will be interested to calculate this distance, is not it? That will be my Euclidean distance. But suppose this distance, linear distance is not important. For us, it is important that what is the angle between two vectors representing these two data point. And that is what I have done here. I have blue vector for representing this data point. I have this another blue vector for representing this data point. So, this is a x and this is y vectors. So, I do not want to know the distance, I want to know the angle between x and y vectors, right. So, that will give me the angular relation between two data points. Remember in clustering, we are trying to find out some sort of relationship, some sort of closeness. Here, we want to know how close these two data points in terms of the angle. So, how can I calculate the angle between x and y vector? Very easy. We have done vector multiplication in our one of our lecture. We have also calculated the angle between uh, vectors in that lecture. So, if I have two vectors x and y for two data points, then the angle alpha will be given by cos alpha equal to dot product of these two divided by the length of each of this vector. So, I know the angle. Now, imagine these two vectors does not have any angle, they are overlapping. That means the angle alpha will be 0, then cos alpha will be equal to 1. So, that means that is the closest, you cannot have more closer than this, right. So, I will define a distance in such a way that when the angle is 0, my distance measure will also be very small, right, the lowest one. So, that is where the chord distance comes. 
we will define the distance between these two data point in terms of this chord shown by this pink line. This is the chord considering a circle of radius 1, unit, unit circle. So, what do I get the, how do I get the length of that chord? The length of that chord which we will call the chord distance is equal to 2 into 1 minus cos alpha, alpha is the angle between these two vectors and the square root of that. You can easily check now when the alpha will be 0, cos alpha will be 1 and the distance will be 0. So, this is called the chord distance. There is another type of distance which does not again look into the linear distance in the space, rather try to identify the uh, statistical correlation between the data points and that is called correlation distance. Again what do we have? We have the n dimensional data suppose and I have x vector that is for one data point and y vector for another data point x 1 to x n, y 1 to y n. Now, I take this x and y vectors and calculate the Pearson correlation coefficient as simple as that. In one of our lecture, we have learned about Pearson correlation coefficient. So, we calculate the correlation between x and y and if you remember from that lecture, Pearson correlation coefficient will be covariance between x and y divided by standard deviation of x and standard deviation of y. These are easy to calculate, right? In R, you can easily calculate that. So, you can simply in one line command, you can calculate the correlation between uh, the Pearson correlation between x and y. So, we know Pearson correlation can vary from plus 1 to minus 1, right? If plus 1 means we have a positive linear relationship, minus 1 means we have a negative re, uh, linear relationship, 0 means there is no relationship between these two, right? They are independent. Now, that is how we define the correlation distance d core is equal to 1 minus the correlation, the Pearson correlation between these two data point divided by 2. So, what will happen? When I have uh, the correlation between x and y is equal to plus 1, that means they are positively correlated, right? Then my distance should be low, right? So, then I will have 1 here. So, that means I will get d correlation equal to 1 minus 1 by 2, I will have 0. Whereas, suppose I have negative correlation. So, they are not close, but they have association, right? So, in case of that, suppose correlation between x and y is equal to minus 1, then my distance will be 1 minus minus 1 divided by 2. So, it will be plus 1. So, it is the another extreme. If I have a distance class 1, that means they are oppositely connected, right? opposite from each other. So, I may keep them separate in separate clusters. Whereas, if the correlation is 0, that means they are independent. right? So, the distance is 0 0.5. From 0 to 1, it is in the middle. So, this way, based on the correlation, statistical correlation in your data set, you can also measure the closeness between different data point and then use that to segregate data in different clusters. The last one that we learn today in this lecture is quite different. It is called Hamming distance. And let me explain that using a something different, not gene expression data or something like that. Suppose I have two words, we will call them strings, right? So, I have rat and I have cat. So, what do I do? I check each of this letter. Now, both the word has three letters. So, we say these strings rat and cat, these two strings have the same length of three characters. Now, I have aligned them and I start from the first character and check whether this first character C in one string matches with the second first character in the other. No, it does not match. So, I say 1. Now, I go to the second one and check whether the second character in my string matches with the second character in the other string. Yes, they match. So, I say 0. That means, they are similar, exactly same. Similarly, for the third one also, you get 0. So, the summation is 1 plus 0 plus 0 is 1. This is my Hamming distance. Hamming distance between 
these two strings. So, that is what I have written mathematically here. So, Hamming distance between two data set, two data point or two object in a n dimensional space if I consider and remember both have the same dimension 1 to n, then it is equal to summation of del i. What is del i? Del i is equal to 0 if x i and y i are same. If these two are same or identical, then I will say del 2 will be 0 the way we have done for a and t in this case. If they are not equal, then I say del i equal to 1. So, it is a binary case and you are summing those binary digit 1 0 1 0 and the whole uh, summation the, the result is actually called the Hamming distance. Each of these distance measure has their limitations, has their specific uses. Based on that, we have to use it. When we will use those for a particular problem, we will discuss why we are using that particular type of distance measure for our work. Let me jot down the key point of this lecture. The most commonest, uh, common uh, uh, distance measure that we use for our data analysis in clustering is usually the Euclidean distance. A generalized form of Euclidean distance, Manhattan distance is Minkowski distance and a, in many cases it is better to use a weighted uh, distance measure and Mohlanovich distance is one of the common uh, method uh, which is a, a form of weighted Euclidean distance which is used for machine learning in clustering. Then apart from this linear distance based thing, we have also something called chord distance which measure the angle between two data point or objects and also we may use correlation distance which is based upon the statistical correlation in your data. And at the end we have discussed about Hamming distance which is essentially binary and in some cases if you have some qualitative data it is much better to use Hamming distance type measure of distance. That is all for this lecture. I leave you with a particular problem to solve. Suppose I have uh, done a gene expression experiment and I have 1, 2, 3, 4, uh, 5 experimental conditions and I have measured multiple genes expression. I have shown just part of it, one, gene 1, gene 2 and gene 3. What you have to do? You have to calculate the correlation distance between gene 1 and gene 3. I hope you will try it. You can use R or any other uh, uh, calculator to calculate this one. You know the definition of correlation distance by now. So, I hope you will be able to do it. Till then, happy learning. See you in the next lecture.